<laughs> anyway, everybody, thank you so, so very much. My name is Donna Amelia, co-founder of EGN Singapore, Indonesia, Malaysia. Very grateful to have you all here today at the EGN Knowledge Sharing. And it's my privilege to introduce our speaker today, Bapak Johannes Jeffrey Johari. He's not only um, a dear friend, he's my mentor, he is my friend, <laughs> he's EGN chairperson at uh, EGN Indonesia, and then his wisdom is just unbelievable. And most of it is that he's very, very kind and humble leader. That's why I love him so much. Yeah. So to, the topic of today is mastering in leading from the intersection of all contradiction. So I will read uh, Bapak Johannes Jeffrey bio now. It's my honor to do that. So Pak Jeffrey had over 15 years of experience in senior executive level as growth and value creation architect from strategy to execution, helping organization performing business and process improvement across all over industries in various global companies, mainly focusing on customer experiences, innovation, digitalization, and ESD initiative. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I will hand over now to my favorite person, one of my favorite person in Indonesia, <laughs> Bapak Johannes Jeffrey Johari. Pak, over to you. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Donna. It's a very nice. And then uh, you know that I really, really get the gratitude about uh, this uh, knowledge uh, sharing session. Uh, and then thank you for introducing me. Uh, uh, before I start the presentation, I would like and then to say thanks to Nick and also that the to uh, to the team behind, you know, uh, we prepared this knowledge sharing session for the last, I think, the one month, two month to uh, Marcella and then uh, also that uh, to Juma. I would like also to address this to Monica. Okay, uh, just to make sure um, all of you can hear my voice very well. There is no hiccup, everything okay? Okay. Yes, Pa. So, okay. Um, okay, I would like to uh, explain about the topic because you know that a few weeks ago, there's a lot of the confusion about the topic. But basically, that this is the main reason and then to make a people confused about the topic and then what the topic is it. So, uh, you know that um, from my point of view, the test of a first-rate leadership intelligence is the ability to hold the two opposed idea in the mind at the same time. So if uh, we take it literally, uh, I, that I use this uh, from the perspective of the CEO, of the managing director, uh, CEO role is the intersection of all the contradictions. For example, like uh, delivering a short-term result, versus investing in long-term performance. Taking time to gather facts and do analysis versus moving fast to capture opportunity. Respecting the past and creating continuity versus disrupting the future. Maximizing value for shareholder versus delivering impact for other stakeholders, you know, like the community, regulatory, employee, etc. Having confidence to make tough call versus at the end that you are uh, expected to have to showing humility to ask to ask for and receive feedback. So basically, that the in strategic area, the best CEO build their vision by looking where various aspects of their business and the market intersect. Uh, setting the right one is at the intersection of four circle. According to Ikigai, what the world needs, what you are good at, what you are passionate about, and how you can make money. And looking at the intersection of the circles, the best CEO can find and amplify potential vision that could be able to reframe the game. So this is basically that the topic um, approximately around 20-25 minute presentation. And then uh, if you want to address the question, you can address the question in the chat box or that you can address directly that after the end of the presentation. Okay, um, Sela, can you go to the next slide? Okay, in the next slide, uh, I want to explain like this, if you, if you are a visual person, so 
the message that I want to say, a CEO is often called the master of reconciliation and managing contradiction in the business world due to their need to balance and harmonize conflicting interests, goals, and perspective. A CEO ability to reconcile and manage contradictions is central to their effectiveness in leading an organization. So we might be adapt at the managing paradox and finding equilibrium among competing demands, ensuring that the organization remains dynamic, resilient, and successful in the complex and ever-changing business landscape. So the best CEO does not stop on finding the threat of only, but amplifying it to bring the new potential vision to reframe the game. So let me give you one of the example. Last Rebidian, Last Rebidian Sorensen, uh, the former CEO of Novo Nordisk, saw the unmet medical needs in society related to diabetes. He also knew what the, his company was good at biologics, drugs that are produced from living organism or contain components of living organism. Sharpening the vision further, Sorensen was passionate about taking a patient orientation instead of catering to the doctors as was the industry norm. Sorensen had to do what is right for the patient and convince the doctor to be their partner. Then, all employees in Novo Nordisk were asked to meet with the patient and understand what their life was like and how Novo Nordisk products become transformative. It helped their people see what they are contributing that something much bigger than the job they thought they had. You know that uh, Sorensen applied finding and amplifying the intersection. And under Sorensen uh, tenure, Novo Nordisk revenue grew tremendously, and today the company controls near half of the insulin market globally. So, uh, going to the next slide. You know that why that the intersection is not a singular, but also a plural. I try and then to give like the 10 situations that uh, put the CEO in the intersection. However, in reality, there's a lot of the intersection uh, the, inter, uh, the intersection and they uh, and then they collide one to another. First is about the balancing short-term and long-term goals. CEO must manage the tension between achieving short-term financial performance, for example, like the monthly uh, profit and loss, the quarterly, and then investing in the long-term strategic initiative. Yeah that they not yield immediate result. Let's say that lately that uh, is so hype about the renewable energy. You know that um, the investment in the uh, transition of the renewable sources is a very expensive and then consider of risky due to the uncertainty of the uh, separate thing. The technology performance and then the regu regulatory case and then uh, we also have not clear that whether that, that it will be paid off or not. One of the example I can provide this from the Elon Musk Tesla. Uh, Elon Musk focus on long-term sustainability and innovation with the Tesla, often at the expense of short-term financial stability. Yeah. The trend of his by investing heavily in R&D Giga factory and cutting edge battery technology must ensure Tesla future leadership in the electric vehicle market, even when it strains the company's finest. The, um, the amplifying opportunity in Tesla is this strategy has paid off as Tesla is now a leader in electric vehicles and renewable energy solution with a strong brand and the market position. The practical tip that I can share with you, um, clearly articulate a vision that balance immediate action with the future inspiration. This helps align all stakeholders. Be ready to pivot based on market case while keeping long-term goals in focus. Use data and analytics to focus trend 
or do backcasting and make informed decision that balance short term gain and mid long term position. So backcasting is the doing the uh, uh, doing and assessing feasibility of desirable uh, future. So going to the next slide. This is about aligning stakeholder interests. Yeah. CEO needs to reconcile the sometimes conflicting interests of various stakeholders, including shareholders, employees, customer, supplier, and the community. For example, shareholders might demand higher dividends while employees seek better wages and benefits. The example of this case, I took it uh, from, Paul, uh, from Paul Coleman from the Unilever. Paul Coleman prioritized sustainability and long-term value creation, aligning the interests of consumer, employee, supplier, and investor. The threat of is, Coleman stopped providing profit guidance and emphasized sustainable practice, which initially worried some investor focus uh, usually that the investor focus mostly on the short term gain. The um, employing uh, um, uh, opportunity is under Pullman leadership, Unilever commitment to sustainability attracted social conscious consumer and investor, enhancing the company brand value and long term profitability. Unilever's sustainable living plan demonstrate that sustainability and profitability can go in hand together. The practical tips here, one, regular harness communication with all stakeholders helps build trust and align expectation. Develop and communicate a clear vision that resonates with all stakeholders, highlighting how their interests align with the company long-term goal and involve stakeholders in decision-making process to ensure their perspectives are considered and to gain their support for strategic initiative. Let's go to the next slide. This picture to tell about integrating diverse perspectives. In today's global and diverse business environment, CEO must navigate different cultural, social, and business practice. We need to integrate diverse perspectives to create cohesive strategies and organization culture. Let me uh, take from one example, Sundar Pichai from Google. Sundar Pichai has promoted a culture of inclusivity and diversity at Google encouraging diverse perspectives in decision-making processes. The type of here, Pichai has invested in diversity and inclusion program, which require time and resources. But this initiative can attract a broader range of talent and idea. The amplifying opportunity here Diverse teams have driven innovation in artificial intelligence, machine learning, and cloud computing at Google. This inclusive approach has led products like Google Assistant and Google Cloud Platform, which cater to a global user base and a diverse needs. The practical tip here, one, Promote a culture where all voices are heard and valued. Encouraging open dialogue and diverse viewpoint in decision-making processes. Create cross-functional uh, cross -functional team that bring together individuals with varied expertise, backgrounds, and perspectives to tackle complex challenges and drive innovation. And foster an environment of continuous learning and development to strengthen employee learning agility is about learn, unlearn, and relearn. Now we are going to the next slide. This picture to tell about uh, 
balancing innovation and stability. CEO must foster an, an environment of innovation to stay competitive while also ensuring operational stability and efficiency. Encouraging risk-taking and experimentation must be balanced with maintaining core business process and profitability. Let's we learn together from Reed Hastings, the founder of Netflix. Reed Hastings led Netflix to transition from DVD rental to streaming and to producing original content, balancing innovation with stable service delivery. The trend of years, Hasting invested heavily in streaming technology and original content creation, which required substantial financial resources and risk-taking. The amplifying opportunity here Netflix innovation in content production and streaming technology has driven massive subscriber growth and market dominance, especially boost during the COVID-19. The stability of its subscription model ensure consistent revenue stream in Netflix. The practical tip that we can draw from the story of uh, Netflix, first, Maintain strong performance and reliability of core business operation while investing in new technology and market opportunity. Implement both incremental improvement to existing product and service and pursue disruptive innovations that can open new market or significantly alter existing ones. Develop robust risk management frameworks to evaluate and mitigate the potential downside of the new initiative, ensuring that core business remain unaffected by experimental uh, ventures. And the last, balance customer needs for reliable, high quality product with their desire for innovative features and new offering, ensuring customer satisfaction and loyalty still intact. Now that we are going into the next slide. This is, uh, this is uh, you know, that the, every CEO also that share this kind of the dilemma. This is about navigating ethical and profit-driven decision. So CEO are faced dilemma that fit ethical consideration against profit motive. Decision must balance doing what is right and doing in the right way with achieving a financial objective. So I put the one example then from the Kenneth Frazier from Merck. Kenneth Frazier emphasized the importance of developing life-saving drug and vaccine, often prioritizing a patient need over short-term financial gain. The type of here, Frazier commitment to ethical practice included withdrawing profitable drug from the market due to the safety concern and investing heavily in R&D for critical medication. The amplifying opportunity here, much focus on ethical drugs development has enhanced its reputation in the pharmaceutical industry and amongst customers leading to the long-term success. The company investment in innovative treatments such as cancer immunotherapy has opened the new revenue stream and solidified its position as a leader in medical research. The practical tips here clearly define and communicate the company value and ensure that all decisions align with this principle. Maintain transparency in decision-making process and hold the company accountable for ethical standard. Focus on long-term value creation rather than the short-term gain. Understanding ethical practice can drive sustainable growth. And the last, my favorite tips, always remember doing the right thing in the right way. Because 
if you are doing in the right thing, but not in the right way, it's all, this is similar that also that not doing the right thing at all. So this is supposed to be starting from the top, the CEO. Going to the next slide. So this is about managing change and continuity. Leading an organization to change requires maintaining continuity in core value and business operation. CEO must ensure that changes are smoothly integrated without disrupting the existing business. Let's take example from Microsoft from Satya Nadella. When Satya Nadella took over as a CEO in 2014, he focused on transforming Microsoft into a cloud-first and mobile-first company while preserving the strength of its existing software products. The type of the, uh, the Nadella did here, Nadella shifted resources toward cloud computing and AI, including substantial investment in Azure, while ensuring the continued development and stability of core products like Windows and Office 365. The amplifying opportunity here, this strategic shift enabled Microsoft to become a leader in cloud services, driving significant revenue growth from Azure. At the same time, the continued success of Windows and Office 365 provided a stable foundation contributing to overall business stability and profitability. The lesson learned here, one, implement a mix of incremental improvement and transformative initiative to ensure continuous progress without disrupting the core business operation. Second, foster a company culture that embrace change and innovation while respecting and building on the company heritage and core value. Third, allocate resource strategically, investing in new technologies and market while ensuring the stability and competitiveness of existing products and services. We are going to the next slide. So this slide about reconciling market demands and organizational capability. CEO needs to align market demand with the organization capability and resources. This involves making strategic decisions about product development, market entry, and resource allocation. I take uh, the story from Tim Cook uh, from Apple. Tim Cook has a doubly balanced meeting consul, uh, consumer demand for innovative technology products with Apple capability in design, engineering, and supply chain management. The type of year, Cook has invested heavily in the new product lines like wearables, Apple Watch, AirPod, and the Surface like Apple Music and Apple TV Plus while ensuring the continued excellence of core product like iPhone and Mac. The amplifying opportunity here, this investment have the, uh, diversified Apple's product offering and revenue stream, helping to mitigate risk associated with the saturation of the smartphone market. The success of wearable and services has significantly contributed to Apple's growth and profitability. The lesson learned and practical tips here, continuously monitor market trends, consumer preference, and competitive dynamic to identify emerging demand and opportunity. Align market demand with the company's existing strength and capability to ensure efficient and effective execution. Allocate resource strategically to area with high market demand and growth potential 
while maintaining the stability of uh, core operation. Now we are going to the next slide. This is about handling internal and external pressure. CEO face internal pressure from employee and management team, as well as external pressure for market competition, regulatory bodies, and economic condition. Balancing this pressure requires a nuanced understanding of a both internal dynamic and external environment. Let's let us take example from Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon. Jeff Bezos dealt with internal challenge of managing a rapidly growing workforce and maintaining the company's culture and innovation. Externally, Bezos had to manage shareholder expectation for continuous growth and profitability while navigating regulatory scrutiny and competition. The type of year, Bezos reinvested profit into new ventures like AWS, Amazon Web Service, Amazon Prime, and internal expansion. You know that uh, when the Bezos reinvested profit into the new ventures, often that he used at the expense of short-term profitability. In the few years, Amazon uh, profitability is negative. You know that the, the uh, amplifying opportunity here, this investment made by Bezos in the past have paid off significantly with Amazon Web Service becoming a major profit center and Amazon Prime driving customer loyalty. Amazon's uh, diverse revenue stream and global presence have fortified its market leadership and growth prospects. The lesson learned and practical tips here. Always develop a flexible strategy that can adapt to changing internal and external conditions. This includes being open to feedback and making necessary adjustments. Establish and communicate a clear vision that align with both internal capability and external market demands. This helps in gaining stakeholder buy-in and managing expectations. Now we are going to the next slide. This is about balancing cost control and growth. Effective cost management is crucial for profitability, yet growth often requires significant investment. CEO must find ways to control costs while simultaneously pursuing growth opportunity. Let us take example from Mary Barra from the General Motors. Mary Barra focused on reducing costs and improving efficiency at GM while investing in the future growth area like EV, the electric, electric vehicles, and EVs, autonomous driving technology. The third talk here, Bala made tough decision, including plant closure and workforce reduction to cut costs. She also redirected resources toward the development of EV and EV. The amplifying opportunity Bala got, this cost-saving measure provided the financial flexibility to invest in growth opportunity. General Motors' commitment to EV and EV has positioned the company as a leader in the evolving automotive industry, opening new market and revenue stream. The lesson learned and the practical tips here Streamline your operation and optimize supply chain to reduce costs while maintaining product quality and customer satisfaction. Allocate resources strategically, balancing investment in the core business area with the funding for the new growth initiative. And the last, maintain a long-term perspective 
recognizing that short-term cost control efforts can provide the financial stability needed to pursue long-term growth opportunity. Now we are going to the next slide. This is about resolving conflict and building consensus. CEO often mediate conflict within the executive team or between departments. Building consensus and ensuring that all parts of the organization are aligned and working toward common goals is a key aspect of uh, their role. And I take one example from Indra Nui uh, PepsiCo. Indra Nui faced conflicts between proponents of traditional sugary snack and beverage and advocates for healthier product lines. In building consensus, Nui implemented the performance with purpose strategy, which aimed to balance financial performance with a social and environmental responsibility. She engaged employees, investors, and other stakeholders through transparent communication and demonstrated the long-term benefit of healthier products. The trend of years, Nui made significant investment in R&D for health, healthier products while continuing to support and optimize the traditional product line. The amplifying opportunity Nui got PepsiCo expanded portfolio of healthier options has helped capture a growing market of health conscious consumers, driving long term growth and sustainability in the PepsiCo. Listen, learn, and the practical tip foster open and transparent communication channel to ensure all stakeholders understand the issue, decisions, and benefits. Always involve key stakeholder in decision making process to gain diverse perspective and build by it. Practice active listening and empathy to understand the concern and motivation of different stakeholders, facilitating more effective and conflict resolution. Going to the next slide. So this slide basically are uh, uh, the key leadership competencies shown from the best CEO. Uh, we showcased previously that who have led and made decisions from the intersection. Satya Nadella, strategic agility and innovation. Mary Barra, resilience and adaptability. Jeff Bezos, system thinking and visionary thinking. Tim Cook, inclusive leadership and ethical leadership. You know that um, I can uh, highlight this. Tim Cook has emphasized diversity and inclusion at Apple, promoting a workplace culture that values varied perspectives. Additionally, his commitment to ethical leadership is evident in Apple environmental initiatives, like using recycled material in product and striving for carbon ne uh, neutrality. In the Anui, PepsiCo, showing the ethical and responsible leadership. Elon Musk, Tesla, and SpaceX is about innovation and crisis management. And Anna Sorensen, uh, Merit International, the crisis management and emotional intelligence. Those examples illustrate how CEOs can lead from the intersection of various domains, such as the technology, market trend, innovation, ethics, and crisis management to navigate complexity and drive their organization toward Fuka and Bani environment. Next slide, the last slide before the Q&A. The summary is mastery in leading from intersections and contradiction in the Fuka and Bani environment involves a CEO adaptness at balancing and harmonizing conflict of interest, goals, and perspective. This requires strategic agility, emotional intelligence, system thinking, and an innovation mindset to navigate and integrate diverse viewpoints while fostering a culture of inclusion and ethical responsibility. By reconciling short-term demand with a long-term vision, aligning stakeholder interests, and managing both change and continuity, 
CEO can drive their organization towards sustainable success amidst the complexity and the uncertainty of modern business landscape. Always remember, you know that this is not only about the type of game, but also about finding and amplifying intersection, identifying the new potential vision to reframe the game. This is the mastery in leading from intersection of all the contradictions. Now I return to Monica for a Q&A session. Thank you so much. Um, so uh, those of you that are part of EGN uh, already know, but those of you that aren't, uh, thank you for joining today. Um, EGN is the Executive uh, Global Network and essentially uh, what they do is bring a lot of executive leaders together to be able to talk about really important uh, issues that you might face specifically as an executive leader. Uh, so Jeffrey, thank you so much for sharing that information. There are challenges and ideas that we're all kind of considering and thinking about. Um, so if you have any questions that you want to ask, feel free to reach out to Jeffrey or any of the EGN group. To